in today's video, we're going to make this Japanese environment in Unreal Engine 5. So by the end of the video, you're going to have this cinematic scene. I'm also going to show you how to render this into a video file. So before we start with the video, a quick word from the sponsor of this video. This video is sponsored by Fast Track Tutorials. Fast Track Tutorials is one of the highest rated tutorial publishers out there. They offer professional courses and the courses range from a wide range of categories. So for example, you can see they have environment art courses, character art courses, texturing, game prop and game art. And this library alone is enough to teach you how to become a professional artist and countless people have benefited from this. So I'm going to give the first 100 users 50% off their monthly subscription. And again, if you just want to buy a single tutorial, you can use this code to get it 25% off. So again, okay, fast track tutorials, really cool. Do check them out. Now let's get into the video. Okay, so I'm using Unreal Engine 5.6 and let's start by adding in some lights. So for the lighting of the scene, we are going to use the environment light mixer. So the environment light mixer is going to allow you to create all the lights required for an open world lighting scenario. So we're going to add all these lights. After that, you can go to the skylight and make sure that you double the intensity of the skylight. After that, I'm going to go to the exponential height fog. So let's enable the volumetric fog here. So lastly, to complete my lighting setup, I'm going to add a post process volume. So in the post process volume, you can search for infinite extents and make sure that this is enabled. In finite extents, simply will make all the effects of this post process volume global. So this is going to affect the whole scene. After that, I'm going to search for exposure. We are going to set our exposure to manual and maybe set this to a value of 10. And it's really difficult to like uh, do the lighting and stuff when your exposure is changing. So for now, we are going to use manual exposure. Now you can create a new folder and add all these elements in that folder. So lighting is done. Now let's make the environment. So for the environment, first let's establish our ground plane. So to do that, I'm going to create a landscape. So you can go to the landscape mode and create a landscape like that. You could also sculpt this landscape, but I'm going to leave it like that. So after this, it's time to populate our scene with some assets. So all the assets that are used in this video are mainly from Quixel Bridge or fab. So here you can see I have the ground asset. This is our ground texture. We have some ground scatter assets. These are the stairs. These are the walls. And I'm going to use this grass asset to scatter some grass. So again, you can download these and import them. Okay, so let's make our environment. So I'm going to add this stairs asset. And I'm going to build my environment kind of around this stairs asset. So I'm going to duplicate that control D to duplicate. So here I'm also going to add a wall asset and I'm going to place this wall kind of like this. And this wall is too small. So I'm going to scale this up. So at this point, we are going to add a cinematic camera actor. So the cinematic camera actor allows you to render your cinematics. So this is going to be used later on in the video. So I'm going to populate that area with the ground scatter asset. Scatter some more assets and duplicate this thing on the other side. And I'm going to make it a group. So control G to do that. Now I'm going to add these Japanese pillars. These look super cool. So I'm going to duplicate these pillars and offset them so that they don't look similar. So these pillars look good on this side. I'm going to duplicate them and move it to the other side. 
I'm also going to place these lantern shrine assets. These are super cool. I'm going to go to my Megascans folder and let's give our landscape that ground material. So this is just a simple material with a normal map. I don't have nanite displacement and all that stuff enabled right now. But you could always enable that later on. So I'm going to populate my scene with additional Quixel assets. So I'm going to add some ground scatter assets as well. So our base structure is done. Now let's place the focus object. Any environment without like kind of a focus object or a story looks a bit lame. So we need to add the central piece here. So to be honest for this environment, I wanted to add an animated Japanese dragon looking thing, but I couldn't find the 3D asset for that. So I decided to add a Japanese statue. So I'm going to add this Japanese statue there. That's going to be our focal point. Now let's add some foliage. So to start with that, we're going to add some trees. So these tree assets are from Fab and I downloaded them and I modified them a bit to better suit this environment. So before you follow the tutorial, make sure that you download the starter project. The starter project is available for free on my Patreon. And the starter project contains all the assets that are used in this video. So again, I'll leave a link to that Download that first and follow along. I'm going to change the lighting here. So at this point, I'm also going to go to the post process volume and maybe change a few values here. So I'm going to bump up the contrast, bump up the saturation a bit. So this is like a Japanese statue. So I'm going to like scale this down and place this like that. It's kind of a ceremonial statue thing goes with this environment and the vibe. For scattering the foliage, we're going to go to the foliage mode and let's start by scattering some rocks. So we are going to drag and drop this rock asset. This is from Quixel. Increase the density, reduce the brush size, and to better view the scattering, you can go to the wireframe mode. And you can scatter these rock assets. After scattering these rocks, we are going to scatter some grass assets. I don't want some dense foliage in this, so I'm going to lightly place these grass assets. If you select the grass material in Quixel Bridge, you have wind settings there. So make sure that your wind settings are enabled. And you can also maybe tint your grass to better match your environment. So again, we have the grass, we have some rocks. And this is starting to look like a proper environment. Now I'm going to stop here, but as you can imagine, you could add more things to this environment and make it even better. So let's quickly render out a cinematic. So to do that, let's start by creating a level sequence. So just create a level sequence and add your camera to the level sequence. Now the idea here is that we are animating our camera. So I'm going to Add a transform keyframe on the first frame. Go to the last frame. So I want this camera to go slightly inwards and I want a slow pan. So after moving my camera, I'm going to add a keyframe. You can also select these keyframes and turn them into linear keyframes. So you're going to have a constant speed throughout the animation. Now let's render this out. So to render this, we are going to use the movie render queue. The movie render queue gives you cinematic quality renders. So you need to enable this, go to edit plugins, search for movie render queue and enable this plugin. 
After that, go to cinematics and go to movie render cube. Here you need to add your level sequence. You can click on the settings and this is where you define your settings. So I'm going to delete the JPEG format and in the formats, we are going to add a PNG format. And you could also render a video file directly. So if you want to share this with your friends or upload this to YouTube, so you can render this out as a H.264 and you'll get a video file. So for this video, I'm going to use a PNG. In the output, you have different output settings. You have the resolution. You also have the frame rate. Make sure that the frame rate matches with the sequence of frame rate. After that, you could also add the anti-aliasing module. So anti-aliasing gives you great motion blur and you can also increase the temporal samples and the spatial samples. So this basically gives you higher quality renders. Now we have these two sample values here and these two numbers will get multiplied. The render time is going to directly depend on the sample count. And here make sure that you enable the warm up frames. So you can save this as a render preset. So I'm going to do that and everything looks super cool. So you can go ahead and render this video. So that is about it. If you like the video, leave a like down below. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And that's it. I'm going to see you in the next video.